Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to finish up. This is section 7.2 of the very last part has to do with something called rationalizing the denominators. But before I do that, I've got to pan where I am. I want to tell you all good morning. Sun coming up from Panama City Beach, Florida. Is that too beautiful? So, you know, if you've got to work with rationalizing denominators, this is the place to do it from, right? Look at this. Is this awesome? Damn, I don't even want to rationalize a denominator. Okay, we better though, huh? Okay. Here's what this means. When I say rationalize a denominator and then simplify if possible, remember back in your math 0024 they taught you never leave a negative number in the bottom. Well here, we're taking it up a notch. Here, in higher level math, it's not considered appropriate to leave a radical in the denominator. It's not considered to be in simplest form. So what we're going to do to rationalize this denominator is we are the trick, or the, actually the technique, is we're going to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 2. What we do to the denominator, we do to the numerator. And in case you don't see why I'm doing that, watch what happens when I do this, okay? Pay attention to the bottom first, and then we'll work with the top in a minute. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2 becomes the square root of 4, right? But that is 2. So do you see my, my I'll, I'll make a terrible joke, my rationale for doing this? square root of 2 times the square root of 2 becomes the square root of 4, which is 2, so there's no more radical in the denominator. Now in the top, 4 times the square root of 2 is just 4 times the square root of 2. So when I come over here, I have 4 times the square root of 2 in the numerator. I have 2 in the denominator. Now the last part of the direction say simplify if possible. Well, it is possible. Look what happens. This 2 cancels into that 4 2 times, really leaving a 1 in the denominator. My final answer is 2 radical 2. And we're done.